Hi, so when you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel in 2025, you may be thinking, well, how do I start? Where do I start? I know the feeling because I wanted to start a YouTube channel years ago, but I actually only started this channel last year. So I would say the first thing is to just get started. You often hear people say, just get started. And the reality is that when you actually start, then you realize that it's not as difficult as you thought it would be. Because we often overthink YouTube. We often overthink taking that first step to starting our channel. And it can really delay us. We can have all these grand ideas of what our channel will be about, the videos that we will create, but because we don't actually get started, these videos don't actually materialize. So step one would be to just get started. Stop overthinking. Stop putting too much pressure on yourself to create these perfect videos. Just start and you will see that you will improve with every video. And the thing is, you learn as you go along. So don't feel like you have to understand everything about YouTube before you start. Because sometimes we think, oh, we'll start when, you know, and we create so many excuses. We just feel like we aren't ready yet. But if we continue to think that we aren't ready yet, then we will never start. So start, stop overthinking, just stop it. Stop overthinking and start your channel. And then also think, do you want your YouTube channel to be a hobby someplace where you are just enjoying this platform, right? Just say that you absolutely love fixing cars and you just want to share this with other people and you see it as a hobby. You don't see it as a business or maybe you do see it as a business. Maybe you are an accountant and on your channel you talk about accounting, you talk about finances and you want this to actually help bring in more customers for you. So your YouTube channel serves as a way to advertise the things that you do, all things accounting, all things finance related. So do you see your channel as a hobby or do you see it as a business? I think a lot of the times when we see other people's videos and they seem so polished, we think, oh, we have to have the absolute perfect background, etc. But, you know, viewers are really, really kind. They don't need to see the most perfect background for them to be interested in what you are saying. It's more about whether they connect with you, whether they are learning from you, whether they actually enjoy watching your videos. So yes, having a decent background, it is important, but you don't have to fixate on having the perfect background, etc. And things a lot I think a lot of the times we can scrutinize our own videos so much that we forget that YouTube is just a way of connecting with other people. It is about people. It is about putting our thoughts via video format and relaying that to people all over the world. And it is about connection. So really, when you think about your YouTube channel, think about how will you be able to truly channel your thoughts in your video formats? Maybe you like doing voiceovers instead of doing talking head, talking head videos like this. Maybe you actually like doing vlogs, you know, and think about how you want to communicate via your video formats. Because there's so many different ways, you know, if you have a cooking channel, then you can cook and record what you're cooking and that way you are teaching people about the different recipes. If you are a beauty channel, you are recording doing your makeup, but maybe sometimes you have voiceovers as well. So it can be very different. You just have to see what do you actually enjoy? What, re what makes you really happy? Because remember, you, are, you will be creating these videos and you will create video after video, right? So you'll be creating many, many videos and you should choose something that you enjoy doing. Otherwise, you will get tired of doing it. So choose something that you enjoy doing. Do not put so much pressure on a single video. Sometimes you may put like your whole heart and soul in a video and then that video doesn't perform so well because you don't get so many views. 
and you can feel so disheartened by that. And it's easy to feel that way, and I know this because I've been there. But don't feel like you've failed. Don't feel like you want to give up. See it as, yes, it was one video. I learned a great deal by creating this video. It didn't do as well as I had hoped. I am disappointed about it. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you don't have to feel disappointed. It's normal to feel disappointed about that. But think of it like, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to create more videos. I'm going to see what happens with my YouTube journey. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. Don't put so much pressure on each video because it can be so exhausting when you put so much pressure on a single video to perform well. And <laughs> it actually takes quite a while to recover from that disappointment. So just think of it as I'm going with the flow. I'm creating content, I'm creating videos, I'm putting it out there into the world. Let's see if it resonates with people and I take it from there. And then I move on to the next video that I create. So don't put so much pressure on yourself and on each video that you create. Understand analytics. Now, when you start YouTube and you start uploading, you'll see your analytics, you'll see something called impressions, right? H how many times your video is actually on people's pages when they go onto YouTube, you know, whether it's in their suggested videos, etc. You learn about all these different things. You learn about click-through rate. You learn about, you know, um, your average view duration, etc. And this comes under analytics. So become familiar with analytics. Don't be afraid to understand it because it actually helps you to understand which videos are performing well, etc. So learn about the analytics when it comes to YouTube. Have a calendar of video ideas so that you don't feel stuck. You don't think, oh, now what am I going to create uh, videos about? Have a look at similar channels to yours and see what are the most popular videos and then create your own version of it. Also, get to understand what evergreen videos are versus trending videos. For example, trending videos can be, uh, you know, to say it's all videos related to Halloween at the moment because Halloween is going to be soon and that's now a trending topic versus an evergreen topic can be about how to do your makeup as a beginner. So that topic, people will be searching for that topic throughout the year because it is an evergreen topic. And when you have a number of evergreen videos on your platform, then you will be getting views throughout the year because people are searching for those terms and for those various topics that you have actually created, those videos that you have created on evergreen topics. They'll be searching on for those topics throughout the year. So that's really, really helpful. Also understand the difference between creating videos about evergreen topics versus creating videos about trending topics. For example, if you're creating videos about Halloween, that's a trending topic. But if you're creating a video about how to do makeup for beginners, that is an evergreen topic. So understand the difference because when you have videos about evergreen topics, people are always searching for that topic irrespective of what time of the year it is. So it's helpful to have many videos about evergreen topics. So if you're thinking about designing your thumbnails, Canva is a really helpful way to actually create your thumbnails. And also look at other thumbnails that have performed well and try to create your version, you know, maybe similar to a, another thumbnail that has done really, really well, but just create your version of it. The thing about YouTube is that it's so much about mindset, right? I know that before you start a YouTube channel, we can often make it out to be more daunting than it actually is. We often think that, oh, when we post this video, this first video of ours, oh, it's going to be like, <laughs> so much can change and you know, what's gonna happen next? But the truth is that YouTube is a marathon, you know? It is not a sprint, it is a step-by-step -step process. Even with things like getting monetized, it can often take long. It took me one year, three months to get monetized on this channel. And I think sometimes when we create such drastic expectations in our head, 
about what being on this platform is. It can stop us from starting and it can stop us from creating new videos and posting it because we build it up so much instead of just seeing it as we are learning, we are growing, we are improving every video. We have to be patient with ourselves. We have to be kind to ourselves. We need to put away our limited mindset and think about this whole journey as something that is, that is exciting, something that is fun, even though I, I will say it is sometimes really stressful even being a YouTuber, being a small YouTuber, trying to get monetized can be stressful. You know, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it can be stressful because you're trying to reach a goal, right? And you don't know when that goal will actually be met. But also see it as, this is exciting, this is an adventure. You have stepped out of your comfort zone and you're trying something different. You're putting yourself out there and you are being vulnerable because to be watched by other people from all over the world, it is a scary thought. I can't deny it, it is a scary thought. And it's almost like an abnormal thought, you know, it's almost like an abnormal thing to be seen by so many people all over the world. But we need to also think, well, what is this going to help you with? It's going to, YouTube is going to be a creative outlet for you. It's going to also help you bring in money if that's what you're looking for, right? It can also help you bring in money by being monetized. It can help you build an audience. It, it can help you connect with people from all over the world. So there are so many advantages to, to being on YouTube, to being a YouTuber. But I think sometimes we convince ourselves that we shouldn't start or that we should start much later. And it is that fear. That fear can be crippling. It can be all consuming to the point that we just don't start. And like I said, I understand that because I wanted to start years ago. In fact, I did post one video years ago and I thought, oh, that video is going to do so well. And then I don't even think it's, I think one person may have watched that video. And, and you know, I didn't do anything with that channel afterwards. And then you think, oh, if I had, kept going, where would I be today? But then you also don't think about the what ifs, you think about the possibilities of today, the possibilities of what can be done right now, what can be done today. So if you really want to start a YouTube channel, have a plan of action, schedule the time that you're going to record that first video, schedule the day that you're gonna publish that first video, be accountable to yourself. You know, that's the thing about YouTube. You don't have a boss. You don't have somebody telling you, well, you have to do this by this date. So those timelines can go because you think, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll get to it when I can. And we often delay ourselves. We often procrastinate because we want things to be perfect. We want things to feel perfect before we start. You know, before I started filming this video, I actually wasn't really in the mood of filming a video, to be honest. But I also knew that sometimes, if you don't want to film a video, you absolutely don't have to. You don't have to force yourself to do so. But sometimes when you start filming a video, you start getting into the flow of things because you've started. And that's what I've learned, you know. Sometimes we just have to make that start and that start propels us to keep going. I also think that for a long time, I thought, you know, you had to be a certain age to be a YouTuber. You had to look a certain way to be on YouTube. You had to have a certain kind of energy to be on YouTube. And those things were inaccurate because the reality is that people, there's so many different types of people in the world, right? And we often gravitate to other people who are similar to us. So you have the introverts, you have the extroverts, you have people who like to listen to somebody who is softer, softer spoken, and you have some people who like to listen to somebody who is really vibrant with their speaking. And so there are so many different aspects of this platform where your audience, you know, if you are a person who, who is quieter, or if you're a person who, who doesn't have much editing in their videos, you will find your tribe, you will find your audience. Don't feel like you have to fit in. Don't feel like there's only a certain type of YouTuber out there and only one type of YouTuber excels because that's not true. 
You know, you get YouTubers of all ages from all walks of life and they are thriving because I think one of the key things about the successful YouTubers, so-called successful because success can be defined in so many different ways, is that they keep putting themselves out there. They keep trying. They don't sit back and think, okay, this channel is not going anywhere, therefore I'm not going to put in any effort. If things go awry, they reroute. So they don't feel like I have failed with this video or I have failed with this channel. They feel like, how can I improve? How can I keep going? How can things get better? And I think that's the mindset that works well. The mindset of I'm trying, I'm improving, and my journey is not another person's, another YouTuber's journey. It is mine alone. Therefore, my journey will look different. And I will not compare my journey to another person's journey because I'm not the other person. And I think understanding that and having that kind of compassion towards yourself is really important when you're embarking on something that is so new to you. There are also many, many times when you have a YouTube channel where you feel like you just want to give up. And I will say that if you truly do want to give up with your YouTube channel, that is completely fine. If you feel like you gave it to all and you want to give up and you're done, that's fine. It's fine to stop things. You know, you don't have to keep going with things if you really don't want to. But if you feel like you can still continue, then do so. I think sometimes we start things and because we don't see immediate progress, we then give up far too soon, even though we want this. Even though you may want to continue to be a YouTuber, you give up too soon because you feel like your expectations haven't been met. And that is why we also need to have realistic expectations of starting a channel. You know, when you start, your, your first videos, you will hardly get any views. And it can really make you feel so sad. It can make you feel like, oh my word, I put in all this effort and I'm not getting views. But slowly, you'll start to see that your videos will get views. I think that if you ask most YouTubers, they will say that I wish I had started YouTube sooner. So if you are on the fence about starting a YouTube channel, go ahead and start. You know, there is so many benefits and you'll only know this if you start your YouTube channel. So, so go on, start your YouTube channel. <laughs> really, start it. And also watch this video about how I became monetized. I think it's helpful. And keep going. Start and keep going.